As you can tell from this sleek physique, if there's one thing I like more than beer, it's running and physical fitness. Well, maybe not, but we're gonna talk about the relationship between beer and running. All right, I've got a beer that they say you can develop film with. I wonder how it tastes like. Wow. We'll try it. He's Joe Six back on Glenn Mac now. We're at the Conchock and Brewing Company tap room in Conchi for what's brewing. What's brewing? Brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app and by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, now with five locations. Ready, fire! Whoa! Hey, do you guys wanna come with us? And welcome to What's Brewing. He's noted beer authority, Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack now. Mostly I just drink beer. We are at the Conchock and Brewing Company tap room in Conchi, right in front of the bike trail. Runners are going by, bikers. It's really just such a beautiful day. I love us. this place. I, you know, I bike in this area and I can't ride by here without stopping for yeah, a it's, cold it's, one. It's a lot of fun and not just because of the women wearing spandex. That never hurts up. All right, we're going to start by talking about fruit beers today. And there's one that Conchi makes right there. If you'd hold up a can, well, you can hold the glass or a can. This is the um, Philly Vice Blueberry Berliner Vice. That's a great name for a brew, uh, beer. And I'm not sure, is that like Rocky on the cover? It is Rocky okay. on the cover, absolutely. All right, so it's a Berliner Vice, which is a tart beer. It's a kind of beer that you would add fruit to it to give it a little bit of a, an extra uh, flavor to it. Mm -hmm. So okay. I like this one because it's got a lot of blueberry in it. It does. It's really it's really a nice beer. But we, we exchange beers every week, and I was in Massachusetts recently, and you know I've always been a fan of Lord Hobo Brewing. Oh, yeah. I am. It's <laughs> one of my favorite out-of-town breweries. And they make a hazy orange IPA called Angelica. I got to tell you, I started with a flight, got this. I ended up, then I got a, uh, an eight ouncer. And then I said, you know what? Bring me a full pint because I really enjoyed it so much. I hope you like it as much. Well, that's one of the great things about flights. It gets you started in a, in a brewery and you get to taste something you might want to have yeah. another beer Here's on. Here's to so. you. Thanks. You can smell the orange even as I open it. Oh, my smell, word. Yes. Right? Oh, geez. It's, Right. This is. It's not just they got a little bit. They, they yeah, really and it's not got tang orange. orange. It's real no, no. orange. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Isn't that a nice beer? That's a breakfast beer for me. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Your morning orange juice. Take your pills with this thing. Enjoy your cereal. That's a good beer. It, it really is. is. All it right. Is. What'd you bring me for? Okay. A beer? So we got a new one from Trogues. Uh, I believe it's new. They're boysenberry tart ale. Ooh. I love the label. Yeah, great uh, can. We're going to see. This is another Berliner Weiss, uh, and which means it's going to be tart, presumably, with a little bit of salt. I think I read that there's some uh, uh, coriander in it as well. Really? So, Joe Sixpack, people think of fruit beers as kind of a new gimmicky thing, but you told me it goes back a ways. No, it goes back wow, centuries. It goes back millennia. This this, they is found that right? Yeah, they've done archaeological digs in China that discovered uh, a beer-like substance that was oh, made with fruit. So is that it goes right? way, way back. Wow. Let's give this a shot. Okay, and I know the Belgians made the lambics is kind of, you know, that's a fruit beer too, right? All right, so I like this beer. It's very tasty, mm -hmm. but I have no idea what boysenberries are supposed to taste like. Well, so. I guess this. Uh, so how do you know a good fruit beer from a not so good? For me, it's the fruit. I want to taste actual fruit, and I don't mean artificial sweetened fruit. I want to taste what it feels like to bite into an, an orange or, uh -huh. uh, or, or a berries or some sort. Or boysenberry, yeah, or whatever boysenberry, that presumably. is. So. Anyway, this definitely has the blueberry in it, the, uh, the vice, the Philly vice, and the orange IPA does. Let me show you a few others that I brought you. This is from Single Cut, which is Clifton Park, New York. Um, this is their uh, cranberry, where did I, I lost the name of it? Cranberry Sour Lager named Kim. 
I guess that's the, the yeah, girlfriend really. or the owner, or maybe that is the owner. Single Cut's a really, really popular brewery these days. Brew Dog Pina Playa Pina Colada Gosa. That one scares me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right. That's I mean, be... Pina Col I've never met anybody that got drank pina coladas you know it wasn't it sloppy i think a college kid's getting drunk on yes, the beach exactly. and like not knowing how to handle exactly. it but we'll see this one intrigues me i haven't tried it but i am going to do so this is belly fluff cucumber melon gosa with sea salt i'm familiar with this beer is actually. that right by yes. manny Unk brewing the cucumber is really nice in it and you'll notice this is a new label for uh manny Unk. we've had their beers yeah. on the show before and they've rechanged uh, or they've changed their look a little bit nice looking beer all right we'll let's close it. this again um, certainly a good thing for summer. What should people look for? Any fruits that don't work, by the way. <laughs> I love peach beers. I really think that's a really nice beer. Uh, boy, a, a fruit that doesn't work. Maybe pineapple's not my favorite okay. uh, for, for beer. I think right. it just, just juice. All right, and so what? anything in particular people should look for? I, again, I think it really needs to taste like the fruit that it says on the label. If it tastes like fake, like Kool-Aid, it's just not worth my time. Okay, very good. Not gimmicky, good stuff, certainly for the summer. And you feel like, you know, you're, you're not just drinking beer, you're going out and eating something healthy. Yes. <laughs> kind of. Maybe, maybe not. All right, coming up, we're going to talk. You think some of these were unusual? Joe Sixpack brought a full yes. satchel, really weird flavored beers. We're going to try all of those and enjoy ourselves from the Concha Hocken Brewing Company <laughs> Tap Room in Conchi. With Joe Sixpack, I'm Glenn Mack now. This is What's Brewing. Hi, it's Glenn Mack now. You've seen some of our Concha Hocken Brewing Company spots on this show, so I'd like to invite you to come and check them out. You can find us in Concha Hocken, Bridgeport, Phoenixville, King of Prussia, and here in Havertown, where I'm enjoying an award-winning Puddler's Row right now. It's one of our year-round core beers, along with Type A IPA and user-friendly Blonde Ale. We've also got exciting seasonal beers, like Blood Money IPA, Philly Vice, and our Unfiltered IPA series. And come hungry. From burgers and wings to salads and small bites, there's something for everyone. Don't leave without trying the amazing cheese cream. The warm weather is here, so you can enjoy yourself on one of our outdoor spaces. And good news. You can find Concha Hocken beers at grocery stores, distributors, and restaurants throughout PA, South Jersey, and Delaware. So get yourself to Concha Hocken Brewing Company. I'll meet you at the bar. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing from the Concha Hocken Brewing Company Tap Room in Conchi. We're on the deck, Joe Sixpack and I are joined by Scott Silipini, who is the manager here and been part of Conchac Brewing from the beginning, From the beginning, man. yeah. Opening day you were Gosh, here. yeah. So we're here middle of the week. It's like between 5 and 6 late afternoon and the place, all kinds of people on the deck, usual kind of vibe. Here. Absolutely. This is definitely our busy time of year and these months in particular, uh, Thursdays in particular because we have the running club. Yeah. But yeah, we're, we're packed. All right. So here's the deal, Joe Sixpack, you went hunting for unusual? What, what, what really we got? flavored beers. You and I, we did this a couple times in our podcast. We I, had a I'm lot of fun. I'm happy with my Puddler's That's Rose. basic beer, okay? That's nowhere near what we're going to be pouring here. The first one I grabbed for us was from Eight and Sand. They sent this over to me, a new brewery over in Woodbury, New Jersey. Okay. We're doing some unusual beers, and this one is Jersey Long Hot Spear. It's mm. a smoked beer made okay. with... Uh, hot peppers. So we're going to all try these and then we'll do thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, let's give it a taste and honest, an honest assessment and see what you think about it. All okay. right. So here cheers. you go. All right. Thank, Thank you, Scott. My pleasure. Right. Here's to you. Cheers, John. All right. Cheers. Jersey Long Hots, huh? Smell this beer. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Definitely get it in the nose. It's the kind of pepper that you put on like a, a roast yeah, pork sandwich. Yeah, I need sandwich. a roast pork sandwich. Yeah. You're right. With sharp probe alone. What do you think, Scott? Definitely like a smoky finish. Right, smoky um, finish. All right, thumbs up, thumbs down, gentlemen. One, two, three. All right. Uh, doesn't make it. I it, like the just, flavor because it's different. I wish it had a little bit more malt backbone to it. It's different, but it's it's like not a beer to me. Okay. It's, you know, it's it's, it's not right. working for me. All right, Fair what's enough. next? All right, 
This one's a completely different uh, way. We're going with the manioc and uh, the French toast crunch. We talked about the, the, the labels before. I guess French toast cut crunch that was your breakfast of champions cereal. at I one time. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean at one time? <laughs> Last week at one time. Come on, that's a great. You know what? That cereal is a great 10, 10 o'clock at night snack. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe the beer as well is a fine 10 o'clock snack. All right. Snack. So it's right. a porter, obviously. All right, Manning okay. Brewing Company. We've, we've okay. enjoyed a lot of their beers over time. Absolutely. All right, Scott, Cheers. here we go. Ooh, that's oh, a my sweet word. smell to oh, it, Oh, my man. word, that is so sweet. Maple syrup. Oh, gosh, yeah. The syrup is prominent. All right, I'm ready. Hold on, I want to hear an honest evaluation from our pro here. So, I really like it. All right, uh, yeah. All right ready? Like it. One, two, three. Oh, All three right. thumbs, thumbs up. up. Okay. So when we did York a couple of weeks ago, we had a beer that was modeled after cereal as well. I'm trying to I remember. I wish I could remember what cereal yeah, was. I know. We had it so was early in the day. There. You know what? Modeling a beer after a cereal. There's a lot of them out there. Kind of works. Seeing a lot of and this lately. one works well. Thumbs up to Manny Brewing Company yeah. for this. You know, it's not too sweet. It's it just you get that maple flavor to it, Absolutely. but it's not. Yeah. Maple, yeah. It's got a lot of body to yeah. it. All right. All right, what else we got? All right, this is the one I promoted, which was the, or is, the Dogfish Head Super 8. This beer, apparently you could use this to develop Super 8 film. I don't know what that means. Uh, let's see, that's, uh, I wrote some notes here. So what is it's it? The heightened, celluloid? What? The, heightened, <laughs> the heightened levels of acidity and vitamin C can be used as a processing agent for some films. It's always what I look for in beer. <laughs> really? All right, all right, let's see what it's like here. All right, and who makes this? This is Dogfish Head. Oh, so okay. They're, they're all well, going to go. You know, we've tried a lot of Dogfish Head, and I got to be honest, they hit and they miss. As, as this far is as definitely a goes. It's made with quinoa. Okay. So okay. Let's right, give that, that a shot. Too. There you go. Thank you. All right, here's to you, Cheers. Scott. Enjoy. Oh, that's much milder than I thought. It really is. I mean, I'm expecting something that's going to, you know, not over the top. Rip at all. the shellac off of things, but that's okay. All right, what do we think? All right, ready? Wow. Okay. I don't. I don't love it. I think it's fine. It just it's seems fun. like an uh, inoffensive goza. It doesn't really do much. Yeah. For well, me, that's so. yeah. The same reason you voted thumbs down, I voted thumbs up because I think. Scott, I felt I was going to try this, and it, I, it was going to, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I one agree. more? All right, one last one here. All right. Pum Plum Diddley from Levante. <laughs> and this, uh, Glenn, good we actually hand. think we talked about this earlier. This is described as a pastry stout. Let's give this a shot. This I'm is good. a high alcohol beer. So while we're doing this, Joe Sixpack, tell us about some unusual flavored beers over time that you have not liked. All right, well, I actually... I'm pretty much a sucker for any flavor. I like most. All right, some odd but, flavor beers. Odd flavor beers. Yeah. The pizza beer from Mamma Mia. Not we good. had it on our podcast yeah. once. Yeah. Uh, I actually liked it. No. It, but it had to. It was not. a tomato beer. No, basically. I don't need a pepperoni tomato beer. Yeah. So, what style right. beer? Right? Wasn't it a guy? It was. Beer it's a basic, a, a basic ale okay. that uh, you know, like a golden ale. Not golden ale, but it was like a. a pale ale type of thing. Okay. But it tasted like tomato, tomato and oregano. Yeah. Wasn't there the guy who made the beer out of his beard hair? Yes, from Rogue. He used the yeast out yeah, of his beard. No uh, that one I don't think really worked too well. No. Uh, the other infamous one in the same vein was from Wincoop Brewing out in Denver. They made a yes. Rocky Mountain Oyster Stout. No thanks. Ah, yeah. I've had Rocky Mountain Oysters. Have you? It's a, oh yeah, it's, I lost the bet. I lost the bet on air to Jody McDonald and the loser at the Rocky Mountain Oyster. They were okay. If you don't think about it, they're okay. It sounds like and a lot I, of bull to me. And I know you're not a big fan of the MGD lemonade Oh my God, thing. worst beer I ever tasted in yeah. my life. MGD 64 lemonade, absolutely the worst beer. All right, so like remind me, what do we have in here? I this forgot. is the Plum Diddly, it's supposed to be a pastry stout. Plum pastry stout, sounds good. All right, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> wow, you and I agree, yeah, man. I'm, right, I'm in good company. Scott, I have to tell you, yes, I find that you have remarkably good taste. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> You're looking That's for a great. new co-host? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow, <laughs> this one, I got to tell you. It's a little. It's over the top. Yeah, it's I, don't very think, I really don't think you could drink a can of this by yourself. No. Uh, but it's no. a good dessert beer. This is more than enough. All right, coming yeah. up, because we're here in Concha Hawken, and we're right on the trail, we're going to talk about beer and running. It's a great combination. Next on What's Brewing.
back to the uh, What's Brewing. We're at the Concha Hockey Brewing Company Tap Room in Conchi. It's a beautiful Thursday evening, Joe Sixpack. Good night for drinking beer out of a can there, on the deck. There you go. You got your Taipei. I got my Puddler's Row. And Thursday evening happens to be when the Concha Hockey Running Club meets here. We have JP and Laura from the Running Club joining us. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Thanks for having us. Uh, and let's talk with JP. How, tell us a little bit about the Running Club. Uh, the Running Club is actually, uh, we just celebrated our fifth birthday. Uh, Thursday nights are our biggest runs. We meet here at the brewery and we go out for a few miles, whatever anybody's comfortable with, come back and... A few so, miles, what are we talking here? Like <laughs> one? <laughs> if, if that's what you're okay with, that's totally fine. As long as you come back here, celebrate with a couple beers and hang out, make some So you friends. run, then you drink. You don't drink, then run, right? I guess that Correct. would be... That'd not be, a good idea. That would be, yeah, that would be a, that would be a These bad are professionals to, here. Come yeah, on. I understand. I understand. And how many, Laura, how many people tend to tend to come by? On Thursdays, it's like our biggest night. So down here, we'll have 60 people. Wow. Whoa. On really nice nights, we'll ha we've had up to like 120 people show up at biggest times. There's that many people that want to run and then just drink beer. Well, they don't want to run, but they want to drink beer and hang. So that's the catch. Okay. And the running is kind of imperative, right? You don't take any Rosie Ruiz's kind of sneaking in there just like, I'm wearing latex and I'm drinking oh. beer, right? You know. <laughs> gotta sweat. You gotta okay. sweat first. There's a great story between the two of you because you met doing this. Yes, we did. And now, and now, and now oh. what? <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Tell me. Well, I came here. I, were, I live locally. I didn't know anybody. Wanted to be social. And I met a guy and we used to be friends and everything else. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to another and... Who's JP? Wow, and you're getting married <laughs> and next year. And now we're getting married. Who's next faster? JP. Wait, are you talking about running or what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> He's always been faster, but I'm always chasing him. This is a family a... show. Come on now. Um, I think it's great. Let, uh, let's talk about kind of the benefits of running and drinking beer. Joe Sixpack is. They go together? Yeah, uh, there's like yeah. been a whole thing about how beer drinking uh, helps with the recovery aspect of it. There's actually been some scientific research on this. Uh, these guys are familiar with the Fishtown Beer Runners who sort of produced this whole idea in the Philadelphia region where they are running from a place in Fishtown to local bars and it's spread to so many breweries in the area including Conchi doing uh, this beer running thing. It's really taken off. Well the location here on the trail is really good and of course um, Conchi Bridgeport is how many miles up? There? Five miles. Five so miles. You ever... Yeah when Bridgeport first opened we well, we thought, what else? What else would we do? We got a big group together, probably at least 65, if not 75 people, and we all ran wow. to the Bridgeport location. So a 10-mile run, because you come back here, right? Well, some people biked back. There's Uber, you know. Right. You never know how it's going to go. Uh, <laughs> I, get, I, get, I get winded driving from here to there, so I don't know about that. All right, here's some things that I read. Tell me if you're buying this as true or myth. Um, Joseph, you said beer helps the carbs help you recover. Right. Okay. Beer contains antioxidants, the barley and the hops, flavonoids, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, that fight ox oxidative stress in the body. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. It sounds legit. Definitely. Yeah, sounds okay. <laughs> uh, multiple B vitamins, that's good for you when you're running, and it strengthens your bones. Oh, well, I must have really strong bones. <laughs> well, there you have it. Right. Plus, if you get a really cold beer, you can just, you know, yeah, put you can the ice, can yeah. right nice down with it. So. Okay. So... People out there watching, sitting at home, drinking a beer, thinking, I gotta get in shape. How do they join you guys? Well, to show up. Yeah. That's our we all paces, that's all hard, faces. Huh? We don't discriminate. Beginners, we have people who have ran the Boston Marathon multiple times. We have people who come out and walk at first and then work themselves up to running. So um, so it's a pretty casual atmosphere out yeah. there. Uh, just does, do you find that the people bond over the actual running? Uh, oh, definitely, thing? definitely. I think uh, especially once it gets to marathon season and everybody's kind of going through some pretty rigorous training regimens, people can kind of commiserate, trade ideas, and enjoy a beer or two. So you guys chose the Type, I, type A IPA here. Do you find it? some beers are better be after running than others? I personally like this one a lot. Uh, I like the MC5 a lot as well. It's very refreshing. So you like hoppy beers? Yeah, definitely. How about you, Lori? This is my go-to beer. Scotty right. knows when okay. I walk in. Okay. <laughs> You're kind of people. Yeah, that's always good. So just expect this whole trail that the Conchug and Brewing Company is on 
is just, it is terrific. And it starts, tell, tell people kind of where yeah, it's it, amazing. Well, you can actually run ba or ride or run from the art museum in Philly all the way out this way on a trail for the most part. Uh, and it goes all the way out to Pottstown where we were a few weeks ago. Uh, and by the way, there's breweries all along it. There's a bunch of them. I mean, Conchie's got two of them and you know, may have a third uh, all right, easy someday. Now. We won't go yeah. too far there. But uh, but there's breweries all along the trail. So it's what it's one of the great assets of Philadelphia, this wonderful trail along the Schuylkill. Yeah, it is great. And it is really, it is a nice atmosphere. And you guys bring kind of so much to it, so much atmosphere to it. And I think people, uh, the number of people who have joined you and enjoy it is just terrific. So nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. JP, Laura, you. pleasure. Uh, good luck. And yeah. Tell you what, he's playing way out of his league. <laughs> anyway, Thank you. that's okay. Hey, coming back, we're going to talk some kind of good idea, bad idea. Cannabis beer? I don't know. We'll see what Joe Sixpack thinks. From the Conchock and Brewing Company, this is What's Brewing. I'm Joe Sixpack. I love beer and I love travel. I've visited great breweries around the world, and I'm inviting you to join me on my next expedition to France. Yes, they make beer in France. We'll travel the Seine on a luxury river cruise from Paris to Normandy. We'll visit breweries, explore the sites, drink great beer, and maybe some wine. Join me in October 2020. Just visit my website at phillybeerworld.com. Let's discover a world of beer together. Welcome back to What's Brewing. Joe Sixpack, those people make me want to go out and run a trail. <laughs> Maybe or you. <laughs> drink a beer. Anyway, um, hey, we've been doing the IPA brew down. Right. You've got a couple new right. results. We do. Uh, and we had a matchup that I thought was going to be really tight. Ballast Point Sculpin versus Bell's Too Hearted. Ballast Point Sculpin was like a huge beer. Everybody yeah, loved beer. that beer for yeah. a long time. Uh, but this turned into a blowout where Too Hearted just stomped them 65% uh, to 35%. Wow. Okay. Yeah, bad times for Ballast Point. They actually had to close a couple places down Saw in that. California. So, uh, you know, Bell's Too Hearted, great beer. It is a great beer out of Michigan. Yeah. The other matchup we had was a real classic. This was in the Mythical Brews uh, category involving. Russian River Pliny the Younger. This is like one of those right. stand in line beers. Yep. And the other was Treehouse Julius from oh. New England. Yeah, Massachusetts. And I was actually, this was the closest race we had the entire time. It wasn't until maybe like 20 minutes ago that yes. you were able to declare the uh, winner on your Twitter feed uh, that Julius won, I think maybe by one or two votes. Oh, yeah. Votes. And we got a lot. We got more than 300 votes for this one. Yeah. People were interested. And what a lot of people said was once upon a time Pliny was all that right now they lean the other way so what does this mean big picture so what's happened is that before IPAs were all about those big west coast big hoppy bitter beers and now we've moved over a little bit more to the New England hazy sort of fruity IPAs and that's where we're at with Julius. Working for me yeah I'm a New yep. England IPA yep. guy that's my jam all right uh, by the way follow uh, on Twitter we'd love to get your votes at Real Glen Mac now at Beer Radar, we post these Field of 32 matchups all the time, and we certainly love everybody's input on that and on the show. You can also follow the show on at What's Brewing PA. Enough social media. Let's talk about some things that are happening. Good idea, bad idea. Okay, Joseph, I love that. this. All right, so here you go. In Reading, there is a place. It's called Beer Wall on Penn that allows customers to pour their own beer and pay by the ounce. Hold on, a little windy out here. They basically put 38 self-serve taps on the wall. You get a card. You hold the card up to the tap. It tells you how much you poured. You buy it by the ounce. Yeah. What so do you think? On first glance, it sounds kind of neat. Oh, I get to pour my own beer. That sounds kind of good, but I'm completely opposed to this idea. Bad idea because the bartender in any bar is is a key part of the experience of drinking beer. It's part of the social aspect of it. I agree. You lose the atmosphere. And a guy loses a job. Yeah, I'm not in favor of that. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm all in favor of all bartenders. Scotty, bring me another. OK, <laughs> uh, good idea, bad idea. And this is coming up in Canada. And we've kind of talked around this a little bit. Cannabis beers. Right. There are two projects going up now in Canada, one of them with Moosehead, which is a, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, a big time brewer. Um, 
basically they make cannabis beers from barley infused with marijuana oil brewed from the stalks the stem the roots of the cannabis plant uh, 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 recreational marijuana legal in Canada now it's gonna come to the United States. Yeah, it's inevitable right? it seems. Uh, Good idea, bad idea. Right now it's illegal in, in the US to have any kind of marijuana or THC beer. Is that uh, even in, in like Colorado? It, it, it because, right because it's, it has to do with federal licensing oh, yeah, of, okay. of alcohol. Sure, so, sure, sure. Uh, so it's illegal right now. You know, I, I, you know I've maybe experimented with my, in my youth. Uh, uh, nah, I shouldn't just put it that way, but at any rate, uh, I, I... Hey, we all grew up in the 70s, man. Come on. Yeah. So uh -huh. uh, I think it's a bad idea. When you go to Europe and you see uh, there's a lot of this cannabis beer over there, it's always kind of scummy, frankly. It's not like beer. It's well, about just so, getting buzzed. So here's what they said. They said when they started to make this, the thing, this is the brewer, the things we came up with tasted horrible. It tasted like rotten broccoli, but they said <laughs> they've worked with it, worked with it, worked with it. They got the right blend of hops and flavor and so on. It tastes good. I don't know. I mean, to me, one's one, one's the other. Thumbs down. I, I yeah, don't I, I don't like the okay. idea at all. Okay, third thing. Here you go. It's a big thing now. Just opened in Chicago. First of its kind in the United States, my friend. And it is the Beer Spa. I love this idea, All right, man. so what you have, let me hold up this picture. It's a nice-looking <laughs> young man and woman sitting in a tub of warm beer they say this is good for the skin, soothing for the body. Joe Sixpack, would you? I love this idea. Not only would I, I have done this in Prague, yeah, where it is very popular. There is That's evidence. me. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let me just say. Can I just tell you something in terms of the pictures? <laughs> I'm going that one, but okay, there That'd you go. That'd be a break. All no, right. it is a lot of fun. Let me see. There's a couple key things here. First of all. Look at you. You're you having a notice, blast. As you will notice, yeah, go ahead. there is beer taps within arm's reach of me sitting there. You can pour your own beer in these oh, the, places. Oh, that's not going in the tub. That's not no, like No, that's me the drinking. In oh, fact, you it's fill not, your stein. It's not really beer. What they do is they fill up a big tub with water and then they throw malt or grain and hops in there. Right. It smells like beer, but the it's not real beer. The only question I have is they're not selling that beer afterward, right? They don't well, drain the yeah, tub and sell right. the beer. You can get a growler of it to go. I don't <laughs> think so. Anyway, beer spa is a good idea, bad idea. I guess I'd go good idea in yeah. that I would try it. Yeah, and, why not? And you have. And I have, You've yes. lived quite the life, Joseph. <laughs> anyway, hey, we want to thank everybody uh, for watching. We certainly want to thank our friends from the Conchahawken Brewing Company here in Conchi. The running club is going to get out there and jog around. We're joining them. They're not just jogging. They are yeah, running. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know what's good? When they leave, the whole barn for us. All right. Order us up another. Anyway, thanks to everybody for watching. We will see you next week on What's Brewing. What's Brewing, brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. And by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, now with five locations.